Hello, and welcome to a C4 Corvette Design Differences video, where we take a look at specific parts of C4 Corvettes and talk about the differences in the design of those parts over the production run from 1984 to 1996 Corvettes. If you couldn't tell from the title of today's video and what I got sitting in front of me, today we'll be talking about C4 seats. Now with C4 seats, there are a number of differences. You have base seats and you have sport seats. Each of these seats here are sport seats, but of a different design. And we'll be covering the different designs of those base and sport seats uh, over the years of production from 84 to 96 throughout this video. We'll also take a quick look at uh, seat tracks where you have either power seat tracks or manual seat tracks. Now, if you're an owner of one of these cars and you're well aware that C4s are tough to get in and out of. You're falling down into the car every time you get into it and then you're struggling your way back out of the car. Every time you do this, that seat in the car is going to be taking some wear. Now obviously the driver's side seat is going to get the most wear and especially on the outside bolster as you slide in and out of it. This seat here is a lower mileage example from a uh, 96 Corvette and uh, even on this one here, we do have a little bit of wear that's starting on the outside of the bolster. So let's say that you're picking up a new Corvette to you and it could be one that has a little bit higher mileage. It's seen some use, seen some wear. The seats are probably gonna be one item that you need to address. There's a number of different ways that you can go about uh, replacing your seats. Uh, you can get pre-covered uh, cushions that you can easily snap into the frames and replace and, and be done with it. You can look at um, used seats from another car that may be of a little bit better condition than what you currently have. Uh, there's also some different covers that you can go and place over these seats and wrap them over your existing cushions. In this video, I'm not gonna be taking a detailed look at those different replacement options, but rather going into what's the differences in these seats from year to year so that you're better informed to understand what the seats are in your car so that you can make the best decision of what you need to do when it's time to replace them. So one thing that I'd like to get out of the way here before we go any further is that all C4 Corvette seats are interchangeable. You can take a seat from a 1996 Corvette and you can bolt it into an 84 Corvette it's gonna fit, they're gonna go on the seat tracks, they're gonna bolt up, everything's gonna be okay there. But what we'll get through in this video is there's a number of differences in those seats throughout the years that you may not wanna take a 96 uh, seat and put it into an 84. Um, obviously for resale value and things of that sort, best to keep the original style seats that was in the car um, but there's some other design differences that may make a later style of seats a better choice for your car. There's one important point that I forgot to mention here. If you're picking up a set of used seats of a specific color, say red for example, you have to watch over the differences in colors throughout the years. You had flame reds, you had torch reds, and if you get the wrong color for year year, it's not gonna match the rest of your car exactly. Same goes for things like tan or gray, for an example. Uh, you have light beige and you have saddle, you have light gray and gray. So take a look at a color chart to make sure that the used seats that you're picking up exactly match the rest of the color of your car. Now again, with C4 seats, there are a number of different styles over the years. And one thing that we'll be looking at in all the seats in today's videos are leathered cover seats. There was also a cloth covered seat option that was available in your earlier C4s. Uh, though these are a little bit more rare to see, um, you definitely do see the leather seats more often and those will be the ones that we'll be touching on in this video. Again, this is a 94 to 96 style sport seat. This is an 84 to 88 style sport seat. And we could go over these differences right here, but let's start at the beginning with your 84 to 88 base seats. The first C4 Corvette seats were the style shown in this photo. These seats are made up of covered cushions mounted into a plastic seat frame. 
The cushions can be easily removed from the frame. That means, at least for your base seats, you can change out your cushions without even removing the seats from the car. Notice the location of the seams and stitchings as this is what changed from the first to second style seats. This style was used in 84 to 88 Corvettes and is a base seat design, not a sport seat. I'll get more into base versus sport seats in a bit, but the way to spot the difference for those of you new to these cars is that sport seats will have additional switches mounted in the bottom seat cushion, at least for the 84 to 93 model years. Another thing that I wanted to point out from this seat here, which is from a 1986 Corvette, is this is a replacement set of cushions. Original leather seats of 84 to 88 cars had a perforated leather design with small holes throughout it. In many of your replacement 84 to 88 seat cushions, they will be a smooth finish without the small holes. One special model of seats was the white seats that were available in the 88 35th anniversary Corvettes. All of these cars had white sport seats that had a special 35th anniversary logo embroidered in the headrests. Now before we jump over into the 84 to 88 sport seats and their design, uh, let's take a little look at uh, seat tracks themselves. Now commonly I will get calls from new Corvette owners that are looking for seats and they will say that they have sport seats when really they only have uh, seats on power seat tracks here. So you have manual seat tracks and you have power seat tracks. This is an example of a power seat track and this is what gives you uh, the forward and back, front up and down and rear up and down movement of the seat itself, which is, is controlled by the switches that are in the center console of the car. Uh, you also have then the manual seat tracks here, which is just a lever that you pull and allows the seat to slide forward and back. Now, one thing that I can say about these is that you can take either a base seat or a sport seat and you can mount them onto power seat tracks or manual seat tracks. They're all going to bolt up just the same. For your manual seat tracks, these are exactly the same, 84 to 96, uh, no differences in them over years. And also you can take a set of manual seat tracks here and you can apply them to either the left or the right side of the car. Same with power seat tracks. You can take a power seat track and you can take one from your left side and you can put it into the right side. Um, you know, especially for those owners that you have a left side power seat track uh, start to go bad on you and you're not ready to replace it. Uh, but your passenger seat track is good because they don't get as much wear. You can take the passenger seat track, put it over to the driver's side, and it's going to work just fine. Now, with your seat tracks on the power ones, there is a difference between 84 to 87 and 88 to 96. There's a few little differences in the overall design of it, but the main difference uh, as far as functionality is going to be the wire connection style. Uh, here, where an 84 to 87 is going to have round pins in this connector, and a 88 to 96 is going to have flat pins on this connector. That also uh, then affects the seat switches, especially in your, uh, say, 87 versus 88 cars. Uh, the switches in the console are going to look exactly the same, uh, but the wiring connection on the end of those are going to be different. So moving back over to the sport seat design, uh, this again is an 84 to 88 style of sport seats. And the identifying feature of sport seats is going to be these switches that are located in the bottom cushion on the front side of each bolster. Now to explain how these switches work is we'll start on this side over here on the right side. And you're going to have one switch here that's going to activate a pump that's located in the base of the seat and it's going to inflate air into three separate air bladders that are located underneath the uh, cushion here in the backrest. And when you inflate those cushions, it's going to provide you some lumbar support. When you press the button, it inflates all three chambers all together. And then whenever you want to dial in the amount of pressure that you want to have on different parts of your back, there are three different buttons here that you push that let air out 
of each one of those specific chambers. Now one of the bad things of this design here is that if you push one of the buttons and you let too much air out of one chamber, when you want to refill it and pump it back up with the air, it's going to pump up all three chambers. So it's going to take a little bit of time to actually set it to where you want it to be. Uh, another bad thing with these designs here is these bladders commonly have leaks uh, with old age. Uh, the airlines have, um, they'll break at connection points or the bladders will get dry, rotted and crack and not hold air. Uh, we'll show you a little bit more of that here um, in a few minutes. On the other side of the seat, you have two additional switches, again for 84 to 88. And uh, one of the switches is gonna be for power side bolsters. Now these bolsters here on the sides, on sport seats, you press that button and there's a motor with a cable connected in through the back of the seat frame that will move these cushions in and out. Now this is really nice if you're doing some aggressive driving. Uh, these bolsters can squeeze in on your sides and really hold you in place in the car. And then you can release them for you know, more um, comfort and uh, have them fold back out again. There's another button here that's for a power recline. You hit this button here and the whole back of the seat will actually power back and power forward. Not really that there's a whole lot of room in a C4 for the seat to recline, but hitting that button will, by motor, move that seat back, uh, backwards and then forward again. Now the power recline feature is only available on 84 to 90 Corvettes. It was done away with in 91. Uh, when we jump to the next style seats here, I'll show you a little bit more of that. So let's take a closer look at the components inside a sport seat. Now again, on 84 to 88, which this is here, or also 89 up to 93 sport seats, all of the components for that sport seat are located in the seat itself. That's important when we compare these to 94 to 96 seats later on. So let's take a look at those components here and I will remove the seat cushion from this here and we'll pull it off to the side and you'll see we still have a few uh, connections that we can't remove it completely. Uh, but this is what the inside of a sport seat looks like. You have a number of different things down here. You have first off your motor for the air pump. It's located here and this will run pushing air out these tubes up through the switches and then there's another line that comes out of the switches here, comes back and connects into the lines going into the bladders that are in the back of the seats here. We also have a separate motor. This is for the power recline feature. Again, 84 to 90 only has the power recline feature. And this runs a cable, goes over to the recline mechanism on the side that gives you the forward and backward motion of this seat back. Now all of this here is powered by an additional 12 volt connection that you would find originally on cars equipped with sport seats. There would be a separate wire coming up from the carpet and it's tough to see but there's a connection point right in here that if you provide 12 volt power to that connection everything in here will function. So if you wanted to put a sport seat into a car that originally didn't have sport seats all you have to do is power 12 volts to this point here and your sport seats would then work. That is given if everything is functional. A lot of these components within here will have issues over the, over the years. First off, starting with this pump here, um, this pump has a rubber diaphragm in it that will commonly crack and deteriorate over the years. Um, causing it not to fail and push, or not to pump and uh, push out air. This diaphragm can be easily replaced. Uh, for example, you can use a uh, bicycle inner tube, uh, cut it and put it in place here uh, to get it to pump air again. Uh, sometimes if you hook 12 volt power up to this and you're not getting this motor to run, nine times out of 10, this motor here doesn't fail. It's usually the switch itself in the seat uh, these switches on the front of the seat here, they can get corrosion in the contacts down within them, within them. and then uh, 
you don't get a uh, good electrical connection between them. Uh, commonly, you can take care of this by spraying some WD-40 down in the switches, working them back and forth a couple times, and uh, then get power to pass through. Uh, so if you're trying to fix a no air pump issue, uh, you don't have the motor running, first look at the switch. Uh, then if your pump starts running and you're not pumping air, uh, then it's usually the diaphragm. If you're pumping air out of these tubes uh, and you're still not getting your bladders to inflate, then you have issues uh, in the air tubing itself. For example, uh, take a look at this one here. Maybe a little tough to see, but there's a connector on the end of this. It's cracked between where it should connect here. That usually happens with these air lines. Uh, still, if you even you have those connected up, the bladders that are in the back cushion here where these air lines connect to them, the bladders will crack and then you'll leak air from those points as well. Uh, same thing uh, going to the recline mechanism and the motor that's located back in here for the power seat bolsters. Uh, the switches again are usually the issue. Uh, usually those motors do not fail. If you're not having power side bolsters moving, um, chances are the problem is in, is in your switch here. Uh, best thing to do is get a multimeter and uh, check the different wire connection points throughout. Uh, trace it down, make sure you're getting power to everywhere you need to. Again, these motors usually don't fail. It's usually not passing power through these switches here. So, but again, a, uh, a sports seat, a little bit crowded underneath as compared if we take a look here at a um, base seat. Uh, this is the bottom of a base seat for a 94 to 96. Um, typically you find this same design on uh, all seats here. It's kind of uh, bare and open. One thing you'll notice is the straps that are located in this seat as compared to back at this sport seat. These wires uh, for the bottom spring, you find these on earlier cars. These springs often wear out. Uh, the strap designs from the later cars, they can be applied to these seat frames and do offer a little bit better support for a cushion that's sagging too far. In 1989, the style of the seat cushions changed to what we show here. You can see how the seam points within the cushions have changed from the earlier versions. These are base seats, which again, do not have the additional switches in the lower cushion. Like the earlier seats, these were also cushions attached into a plastic frame. The frames of these years are basically the same as the earlier 84 to 88 seats, and only the cushions were the part that changed. This style was used for 89 to 93 cars. Over those years, though, there were a few minor changes. First off was embroidery. Starting in 1990, in both base and sport seats, the seat back cushion would have the name Corvette embroidered just below the headrest. This was present for the 90 through 92 years. Then in 1993, the 40th anniversary logo was embroidered into the headrest area for this year only. This logo was initially meant to only be applied to the 93 Ruby Red anniversary cars, but due to an error during production, all 93 cars were given the 40th anniversary logo in the headrest, making these seats specific to 93s only. The other change that occurred in seats during the 89 to 93 years was the color of the frames. For 90 to 93, the seat back frame would match the car's interior color. Tan seats would have a tan back frame, red seats would have a red, and so on. The 89s, though, still kept a black seat frame back for all interior colors. So here we are inside of this 1992 to give you guys an idea of the 89 to 93 sport seats. So these seats here, as you can see, the big visual difference for them is these sewn-in ribs that are along the bottom and the back cushions. These ribs give this seat design a much more distinctive look than what you had over the earlier 84 to 88 seats. Now this being a 92, you also have the Corvette embroidered in the back seat rest, and you have seat frames here that are gray as well to match the seat cushions that are in the car. The sport seat functions of the 89 to 93 seats are very similar to what you have in the 84 to 88 cars. The only difference being the power recline feature that was only available up till the 1990 model year. Starting in 91, 
you no longer had power recline and that changed the seat switches that are in the bottom bolster here. As you can see on this car here, we only have a single switch set that's located on the inside bolster where you have a switch for the, running the pumps and then deflating the individual bladders that are inside the backrest. On the outside seat bolster, there is no switch. The switch that used to be there for controlling the seat bolsters in the backrest was moved down to the front of the seat frame for 91 to 93 years. One of the other minor differences that you'll have in the 89 to 93 sport seats is the switches in the bottom seat bolsters themselves, specifically the colored markings that are on them. For the 89 model year, your switches are going to be black with white markings on them. For 90 and 91, to correspond with the other color changes throughout the car itself, your switches are going to be gray with an orange marking on them. And then for the 92 and 93, you will again have black switches with orange markings on them. And on another side note, if you guys are looking for a convenient place to put a fire extinguisher in your car, the front side frame of the passenger seat makes a great place for mounting a small fire extinguisher. You can mount it in through the bottom of the seat frame and for a small fire extinguisher it keeps it tucked in back far enough away where it doesn't interfere with your passenger's legs but still uh, accessible in case of an emergency. Moving on, the last style of seats was from 94 to 96 and here in front of me I have an example up in a base seat and a sport seat for those 94 to 96 cars. Now the one big difference in the 94 to 6 seats is in regards to the seat backs themselves. One thing that you'll notice here is it's no longer a cushion that's snapped into a plastic frame. Rather, it's a leather wrap that goes all the way over the entire seat back itself. Same on the sport seats. We don't have a plastic frame coming up, it's just the leather wrap the whole way. As for the bottoms of these seats, uh, we have a plastic seat frame, very similar to what we have in the earlier years. Seat cushion can be removed and uh, access to the uh, recline mechanisms and lower seat support straps. Uh, these recline mechanisms, there's a few differences in them over the years within the frames themselves. Uh, if you run into uh, issues where you're replacing that mechanism, you will find some differences there. Uh, but for the most part, they're the same. Uh, but speaking of recline mechanisms, one thing that I wanted to point out for seats and C4 seats is that um, you can swap these between left and right sides. Now on your base seats for all of them, 84 all the way through 96, the left seat and the right seat can be swapped. Uh, there's really no difference in them other than this lever up in the front. This lever here is for your recline mechanism. You press it in and the seat can tilt back and tilt forward. Now, this lever is to be on the outside of the car. So this seat here is a passenger side seat. But you could take this seat frame and bolt it into the driver's side down on the seat tracks and everything will work just the way it should only that this lever is then on the inside of the car. Now, being that there's a little notch in the plastic here, you could still reach your hand down in there and adjust that lever should you need to uh, do it on the left side of the car. That's gonna be the only difference in your left and right seats for base seats. Now, for sports seats, a uh, little bit of a difference, but basically your 84 through 90 sport seats, um, you can swap those left and right sides. For 91, 2, and 3 sport seats, when we have this switch over to just a single uh, switch set that's in the bottom of the seat cushion there, that seat switch is on the inside of the car for 91 to 93. If you take that passenger seat, you put it over onto the driver's side of the car, and that switch is now going to be on the outside of the car. Not a big deal. It will still function as it should, but not the way it should be, but it's still possible to install them that way. Sport seats though, a little bit of a difference there. We'll get to that in a moment. One other thing to say about these 94 to 6 seats, uh, they are a little bit wider design. These bolsters, they don't come in and pinch your back 
as much as you would on some of the earlier seats. That makes this design of seats kind of more desirable for guys that are of a larger build. Um, you can fit in these seats a little bit more comfortably. And you know, we get a lot of guys that will want to purchase 94 to 96 seats for their earlier car, uh, just for that reason. On your sport seats, same thing, wider, more comfortable. But again, there's some issues with those seats themselves that may make that not the best decision. With all the other seats behind us, we come to the 94 to 96 sport seats, which I have a pair of here. Now, one of the first things you'll notice is that these seats are different left to right side. You can see that through the diagonal stitching that goes the opposite way in the seat backs here. You also have corresponding diagonal stitching in the seat bottoms. So that's one thing that makes these seats different from left to right side. Another thing is how these seats are controlled. Now, all the other earlier sport seats, you had switches that were in the bottom cushion. You notice for these here, we do not have any switches at all. Everything is actually performed or controlled by the center console switch. This is the center console switch used for 94 to 6 sport seats. You'll notice it only has a single side power seat switch. And then on the right side, we have additional buttons and a slide bar. This slide bar here, you either have it up for operating the driver's side switch or switch it down for the passenger side switch. Whichever direction this switch is in is what this switch is going to control for your power seat track. Same with these buttons here. What you have is uh, inflatable lumbar for the upper, middle, and lower back. And then also for moving your side bolsters in and out. Whichever switch, again, this is on, that's which seat is going to move. One of the nice things about this switch though, and the 94 to 6 seats, is that you can adjust each bolster independently from one another. So you can inflate just the upper, just the middle, just the back, or you can deflate each one. There's no need for inflating all of the bolsters at the same time and then having to deflate them one at a time. Being that that center console switch is needed to control this style of sport seats and that these were only available in 94 to 96, those sport seats are only available in the white markings on their faceplate. Therefore, if you took one of those switches and installed them in a 93 or earlier car, it's not going to match um, appearance-wise to be able to control these seats. Without that switch, you're not going to control the sport functions of this seat. Furthermore, 89 and earlier cars with a different interior, different console design, there's nowhere to install a switch uh, like that. So in addition to that switch being needed, uh, there's also another item within the sport seats. And this is a wiring harness that would actually run in between both of these seats in the cars. Now, it has several wire connections. And one of the other things is it also has an air line between them. Now, this air line is because there is only a single air pump for these two seats. That air pump is located in the passenger side seat. So anytime you control that center switch, you're controlling the pump in the passenger side and it's either supplying air within the passenger seat itself or it's power supplying air over to the driver's side for those bolsters within itself. So again, another issue that is needed to make 94 to 6 sport seats work in other applications. Uh, one other thing I'd like to say about these seats here, the air bladder design for these seats, um, they are a little bit more uh, robust design. Uh, it doesn't seem that these crack and start to leak uh, like your earlier seats were. If you actually look at one of these air bladders, uh, they almost have like a mesh pattern woven within the, uh, the bag themselves. They don't break down like the earlier ones do. Another thing, the bolsters in these seats they are not controlled by a motor to move in and out. Rather, there is individual bladders under the left and right side, and it's actually uh, air that pumps in to move the bolsters in and out on these. So let's take a look at uh, the inside components of this 94 to 6 sport seat. So here we have the passenger side seat, and we'll start by removing this seat cushion. And you see that we can 
easily remove the whole cushion uh, because we don't have any controls within the uh, seat cushion itself. Now, within the seat bottom here, you'll see that we have a couple different components up front here. The first, right in the center of your passenger side seat, this is the air pump itself. You have a control module here also, and then you have a set of solenoid valves uh, on this far side here. So when the pump runs, and if the passenger side seat is selected from that center console switch, you'll then adjust the solenoid valves within this component here, which would then pump air up through these lines into the seat back into the appropriate bladders. <clears throat> if you are going to uh, be controlling the driver's side seat, a little tough to see, but there is an additional extra uh, airline connection. It's right under here. This airline connection actually connects into this part of the seat wiring harness and then would run over to the driver's seat. If we go and remove the bottom of the driver's seat, you'll see it's a very similar setup. Again, just remove the cushion. And we have the exact same solenoid valve and the air lines leading to the back cushion here. Uh, there's also a spot right in here for an additional uh, control portion modules of the seat wiring harness that would actually be mounted right in within this strap here. For your 94 to 6 sport seats, uh, they really are a much more robust design when everything's working. Uh, these um, valve assemblies here, they usually do not fail. Uh, if they do, sometimes just a little shot of WD-40 down into the different ports on them uh, will free up the solenoids, get them to start working again. Uh, same with the pumps that's in the passenger side. Uh, sometimes you'll have this pump be a little bit noisy. Uh, it doesn't seem like it has enough power. Uh, you can take off the discharge line, spray a little WD-40 in it. It should start working again uh, um, a little bit better for you. So. That reason there is why the 94 to 96 sports seats are unique. These seats, again, uh, you know, you can take them, physically apply them to an earlier year car if you like. It's just that that sports seat functionality of them isn't going to be able to work outside of that year range easily. Uh, these seats can generally cost a little bit more in the used marketplace rather than some of the other base seats. And, um, you know, if you're just looking for, you know, simple black seats for your earlier C4 and you find a set just like these here, um, it may not be a bad decision if you like the looks of the seats, but just keep in mind that these are going to cost a little bit over what you could get regular base seats for because of that sport seat function. And again, you're not going to be able to use them totally. One other thing to mention for the 94 to 96 sport seats is that there is an emblem embroidered in the top headrest. You will find these on all sports seats 94 through 96. However, this embroidery does change in the 96 years with the collector's editions and also the grand sports, which each would have their own respective embroideries. There was one other seat design and it was in 1995's and it was for the pace cars. It was a sport seat design that had special coloring for these cars only. So with that being said, that brings us to the end of our video here and all of the different seat styles that was originally offered for C4 Corvettes. If you have any further questions uh, about seats or anything else for your C4, please check out our website at MirrorCorvette.com. Uh, get in touch with us and uh, you know, send us an email. Uh, be glad to help you out with whatever parts components that you're looking for or to point you in the right direction for them. Uh, I hope this video was very informative and hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.